Well, Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been sentenced to three years in prison. The court handed down its ruling in his absence for illegally selling state gifts. Khan's now been arrested in the city of Lahore. Legal experts say the conviction may end Khan's chances of running in elections later this year. After his arrest, the former Prime Minister released this pre-recorded statement. My fellow Pakistanis, by the time this message will reach you, they would have arrested me and I will be in jail. I have one request from you, an appeal, that you do not sit in your homes quietly. Whatever I am doing is not for myself. I am doing it for my Pakistanis and for you, for your children's better future. If you do not stand up for your rights, you will live like slaves. Slaves have no lives of their own. Slaves are like ants on the ground. The supporters of Imran Khan have been protesting against his arrest in cities in Pakistan. In Lahore, people gathered outside his home, chanting support for the former prime minister. They called for Khan's immediate release from prison. Imran Khan is a national hero who is the symbol of unity. He is the leader of this nation. He wants to save the country. Today, they arrested him and set an example. This is what we are doing to our national hero. Well, Kamal Haider is live for us in Islamabad. Uh, Imran Khan's supporters already saying that they're going to be out on the streets. A significant day in Pakistan's politics. Indeed, a significant day in Pakistani politics. Uh, we have reports that there have been protests in the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province. People are hearing the news. Of course, this does not go down well with Imran Khan's supporters. Uh, we have here with us the principal uh, spokesperson for Imran Khan and his party, the Pakistan Tariq Insaf, Mr. Rauf Hassan, uh, to tell us about the circumstances of this arrest. Uh, what do you know about this? Well, I, what I've been given to understand, you know, that it was uh, a rough handling. Uh, he was uh, covered with a black cloth, you know, and there were, there were pushes and there were shoves. Uh, even to be dishonest, you know, requires a bit of intelligence, you know. So even before the uh, verdict had been announced, you know, they had already posted a contingent of the police at his place. So they were already waiting, like like they knew what was what was going to be uh, uh, said in the in the in the judgment. So the moment the judgment was pronounced, you know, they arrested him, and it was a very rough handling. You know, unfortunately, not only him but all the other personal staff, you know, at based at the at the at Zaman Park residence, you know, were also taken into custody by the police. Uh, what does this do for the party? What does this do for the upcoming elections? Uh, obviously. Uh, Imran Khan was uh, a popular, is a popular leader, and his party was has defeated the joint combined opposition. So, what's the way forward? What is going to be your party's response now? Well, uh, uh, long before <clears throat> Khan was arrested today, he had put uh, together a mechanism. Uh, to run the party uh, in case he's arrested. And we all knew that he was going to be arrested. He most of all knew that he was going to be arrested. No, as a matter of fact, he was fully prepared to be arrested. So we have a mechanism in place, and we had our first meeting of the core committee today, and we have given out a call for uh, peaceful protests right across. I shall share the, uh, the statement that we have released, you know, and you can see exactly what all is contained in that. So that core committee is now going to take decisions with consensus, you know, and they will, they will, they will chalk the way out, <clears throat> keeping in mind the circumstances, you know, that arise in, in, in due course of time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that was the principal spokesperson for Imran Khan and his party. Uh, obviously, the party leadership is now meeting. The former prime minister, Mr. Qureshi, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Imran Khan had said would be leading the party. So we'll have to wait and see what kind of, what kind of protests take place and what is the way forward for this political party. But uh, legal experts across Pakistan say this was done hastily. Uh, there was no court order presented at the time of the arrest. And as you heard from his secretary and spokesperson, uh, the, that he was roughed up indeed, uh, which was unwarranted. Back to you in Doha. Kamal Haider in Islamabad. Kamal, thank you very much indeed.
Well, Imran Khan's embroiled in more than 100 legal cases involving alleged corruption and terrorism. He says they're all politically motivated. In April last year, he was ousted in a no-confidence vote after his coalition partners deserted him. Six months later, Pakistan's Electoral Commission disqualified Khan from running for public office for five years, citing allegedly corrupt practices. Well, Khan and thousands of supporters then set off on a long march to Islamabad to demand early elections. He was shot in an attempted assassination. Police attempted to arrest Khan in March this year, but those warrants were later cancelled. He was arrested again in May, but Pakistan's Supreme Court ruled it illegal. Well, joining me now is our correspondent Osama bin Javed. Osama, you have interviewed Imran Khan on two or three occasions. You've been following this story. But just give us a bit of context. This all seems to have begun when Khan lost support um, of his coalition partners, and that ended in that no-confidence vote. Well, I'll take you even a step further back on how Imran Khan came into power. This is uh, in 2018. It is essentially a recurrence of what we've seen in the past as well, where the outgoing party accuses the military establishment of colluding with politicians and taking somebody out of politics. And this is what Imran Khan uh, was accused of in 2018 by his parties. He fell out of favour with the military, uh, resulting in a no-confidence vote, although that was a democratic movement where he was voted out of power instead of the military coups or people being pushed out of power that we've seen in the past. Uh, but Imran Khan is adamant that all of this is being orchestrated against him. He says everyone in this country uh, is against him, including the military, the bureaucracy, the judiciary, uh, and obviously his political force. So I interviewed him right after his release when he was arrested the last time, and he told me that all of this is being orchestrated so that the pop most popular party, according to him, is taken out of politics. What is behind all this? The PDM and the establishment, they are petrified of elections. Why are they petrified? Because every service says P PTI will get two-thirds majority the moment there are elections. Now, to avoid elections, even before this, they had 145 cases on me, criminal cases. A man who's known in this country for 50 years had never had one case, criminal case. So if you understand the reasoning by what is going on right now, the establishment and the, the PDM parties, then you will know they use this as a pretext to actually crush PTI. We heard Imran, um, Imran Khan in that statement that he pre-recorded, saying that, uh, appealing to his supporters, if you don't stand up for your rights, you're going to be like slaves. He said he appealed to people not to sit and hide in their homes. He is likely, at the moment, to be in jail. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense, from your experience of having covered the story and having met the man, that Imran Khan sees himself playing lesser part or a little part in what happens in the future in Pakistan's politics? Well, I think this is a question that I asked him and he said that he's not arrogant enough to say that there is no future of Pakistan without Imran Khan, but according to him, there is no uh, future of Pakistan without law and justice. And this is something that Imran Khan Imran Khan's appeal was amongst the masses, that his, uh, his anti-establishment is somebody who's built himself as, as, as a newcomer in politics, and that's why he was elected into power. He had four years to prove himself. He uh, did d do some good things, but by and large, he wasn't able to fulfill most of his promises. He went after the political uh, rivals that he had at that time. He jailed them. Uh, the former prime minister was barred for five years as well, a fate likely to come Imran Khan's way as well. So it has all been happening in cycles in Pakistan, where the most pivotal role is played by whoever is closest to Pakistan's powerful military establishment. And and acts upon uh, what they want them to do. I asked Imran Khan if he was given another chance. Would he do things better? Uh, would he still go about all those U-turns that he did? Would he still uh, take uh, uh, all of the people that he took on board who were not in aligned with the, what his view was and why he was elected? Um, and he did have some regrets, but by and large, uh, he thinks that uh, in Pakistan, the only way forward uh, should be the rule of law and justice. I'm not that uh, arrogant or, you know, believe that without me, the country won't survive. But all I know is that my struggle is for 27 years. And uh, the main gist of the struggle is that what I saw when I went as a teenager to England, that I discovered that without rule of law, countries, you know, don't prosper. You don't have democracy. So the key to a, a, a civilized society is where everyone is equal before the law. 
And unfortunately, Pakistan, from its beginning, has the law of the jungle, the powerful are above law. And poor, the ordinary people don't have access to justice. And societies like that can never uh, prosper. The entire developing world is poor, not because of lack of resources, because they don't have justice. Well, as we heard, Pakistan, his uh, party has been saying that uh, they are calling for peaceful protests. We're going to have to see how that plays out over the, the days and weeks to come. Osama bin Javid, thank you very much indeed.